Hello guys and welcome back to a new video here at Architects 3DP. Today I'm going to present you a new 3D printer together with a 3D printer filament dryer box, both provided by Orion, who made this video possible. Both boxes came wrapped together as you can see here, so I'm going to pick up a knife to unwrap it. And the first box we find is as you can see the filament dryer box named Snail by Orion. I'm going to put it on one side and I'm going to reveal the last box. Here we go! As you can see, it is the Arion Star 1 3D printer. Now I'm gonna start with the unboxing, but before I want to introduce you with today's sponsor that is no other than PCBWay. PCBWay is your website to get your PCB prototypes the easy way. Today I want to introduce you to the recently implemented services, OEM, that means one-stop solution. If you're a company or work for one and you need to develop a new product, PCBWay has you covered in every way. This service is mainly focused to EMS or electronics manufacturing service. They can manage the production design, development, engineering validation, and how not, PCBA manufacturing, service, and supply chain management. Also, and especially now, take advantage of the reduction in price with the four layer and six layer PCBs that has dropped by up to a 20%. You can visit the link down in the description to know more about these offers at pcbway.com. All right, so I'm gonna start with the snail because we have never unboxed a 3D printer filament dryer box and I am very curious. When we open the box and we remove the first piece of foam, we can directly pick up the snail itself. There is nothing else in the box, so I'm going to put it apart and I'm gonna continue with the snail. As you can see, it has a small screen here in the front that shows the current temperature and humidity inside the box. That, as you can see, is 29.6 degrees Celsius and 47% humidity. I'm going to continue by opening the box and we have more foam and what looks like the power brick. It's strange, but it comes with kind of a piano black finish, extremely shiny. Then we have some instructions right underneath, as well as a plastic bag with two anti-humidity bags and another plastic bag with some components. If we have a look inside, it looks like the box has a hot surface here at the bottom that will use convection, and I don't know if it has a fan, to circulate the heat. Here at the bottom, we have a small compartment that I guess is where the anti-humidity bags will be installed. At the back, we have the power connector. All right, so we're gonna do now all the necessary assemblies to get it working. First step will be to pick up one of the anti-humidity bags and insert it in place here at the bottom. Next, I'm going to pick up the power cable and connect it to the bag. As you can see, now we're able to turn it on and it has three positions or power levels. Looking inside, the metal plate is extremely hot already, so I'm going to turn it off and install the rest of the components. First, we'll pick up this metallic tube together with two metal ball bearings and insert it in place right here. I'm going to install the other two bearings in place, but it seems that the second metallic tube is missing, since there is nothing else in the box. I will contact Arion to make sure how it actually works. Well, so once ready and having a look at the front, we have three holes where the filament can go out. We'll pick up one of them and we'll change the cap to the two that we are not using. I'm going to use the bottom one, so I'm going to insert this short PTFE tube that was included in the plastic bag. Next, I'm going to install a spool of filament inside, in this case, white PLA from Sakata 3D. So I will insert the end of the filament through the PTFE tube and then I will put the spool in place. Definitely, I think there is a metallic tube missing since I can feel some resistance when the spool turns. Final step will be to close the box and we'll be ready to go. I've set the temperature to the position 1, so it can start drying the filament while we go for the 3D printer unboxing, guys. Alright, so the 3D printer is the Star 1 from Marion. And when we open the box, we'll find some paperwork warning us about selecting the correct voltage. In our case, 230 volts since we are in Europe. Under the phone, we'll find the assembly instructions that we're definitely going to use. And then we'll find all the components on its slots. The first one is this strange assembly that I'm assuming are going to be the extruder and x-axis motors. Next, we'll find the control screen with a knob to control it. Next, a small piece of metal. And it looks that everything else will be this pre-assembled part of the printer. As you can see, the Y-axis comes assembled from the factory and connected to the extruder block that has an orange cover. Next, if we remove the foam, we'll find some more components as you can see. The first one, a small spatula that I will add to my collection. Next, a plastic bag with some stuff inside. 
another one with tools, and these are some more components. We'll have a look at them later on. Next, we can find an aluminum extruded profile with what looks like a handle on it. I assume this will go on top of the printer to pick it up just like that. Next, some PLA filament to test the printer, another part for the assembly, part of the filament spool holder, what looks like the Z-axis motor, a plastic cover with an end stop, what looks like a belt tensioner, some zip ties, the other part of the filament spool holder, and finally some extruded aluminum profiles. This one seems to have an end stop installed already, as you can see. Next, we find the threaded rod for the Z-axis and a couple more profiles. This one is a 20 by 20 millimeters that I guess will be the X-axis rail. And finally, another 20 by 40 millimeter profile that I think will be the second pole for the Z-axis structure. And that was the last component inside the box, guys. Now I'm gonna have a closer look to every component and then we'll start with the assembly because it seems that we'll have some work to do. The first one was the base that has the extruder attached. Then we have two 20 by 40 mm profiles for the Z-axis, the 20 by 20 mm profile for the X-axis, the filament spool holder and the power cable that as you can see is pretty long. Next we find this plastic cover that has an end stop installed, and this weird plastic bag reminds me to the Harry Gummies. We actually have two of them. Next we have the Z-axis stepper motor with the coupling, 50 grams of PLA filament, some zip ties, a plastic bag that contains a needle to clean up the nozzle, pretty cool, and also the teaming belt for the X-axis, as well as the 8GB microSD card with the USB reader. Next, we have the belt tensioner for the X-axis, the spatula to remove the prints from the bed, a bag full of tools, such as Allen keys, a screwdriver and wrenches. The next two components are the X-axis end and the handle on top. Then we'll find the LCD screen with the knob, and finally, the weird assembly I shown you before. Alright guys, so now yes, it is time to start with assembly. We'll prepare the two Z-axis profiles together with the printer base. Have in mind that looking from the front, you will have the profile with the end stop on the left hand side. Ok, so the next we'll need will be the M5 by 45 mm bolts. Since they are not tagged, I will need to pick up my digital caliper to measure them. Once we have everything ready, we'll install the Z-axis profiles in place. We'll first insert the bolts in place, and then place the profile. Remember that the one with the end stop will go on the left hand side and the sensor will face the front of the printer. We'll now tighten the bolts and here we go. Now we we'll rotate the printer and install the second profile. This one can go as you want. We'll tighten the bolts and we'll put the printer back in place. Next we'll need to pick up the two bolts that will hold the Z-axis motor in place, the motor itself and the Z-axis threaded rod. I'm going to install the lead screw in place and tighten the bolt in the coupling. Here we go. Next, we'll attach it to the Z-axis frame right here at the back of the Z-axis end stop. So we'll insert the bolts in the threaded holes and we'll tighten everything in place. Now we'll need the X-axis profile as well as the strange assembly with the extruder and X-axis motors. We'll also need this wrench because we're going to install the pneumatic holders for the bottom tube. We'll actually only need one of them. We'll also need these two bolts for the rest of the assembly. And the first steps will be to set the motor assembly on top of the X-axis profile, since we are going to install the two bolts. This one inside is pretty difficult to insert, so what I've made is to insert the bolt first and then carefully align it to the profile and tighten it in place real quick. Once done, we'll finish tightening both bolts. Alright, so we have finished one of the sides. Now we'll install the pneumatic bolt and tube holder right here next to the printer extruder as you can see. The filament will enter the filament sensor and go to the threads and pneumatic lock as you can see here. For the next step, we'll need the assembly we just did with two more M5 by 14 mm bolts, this metallic component as well as the teaming belt. First step, put the teaming belt on top of the profile just like that. Then we'll insert the extruder carry just like so. The cable has to end up underneath the wheels. Now it's time to install the other end of the X-axis. So we'll insert the two bolts in place and we'll tighten them as we always do. Next step, we'll need the assembly as well as the belt tensioner, the plastic cover with the end stop and some more bolts. So now we'll have to disassemble the tensioner just like that. Once done, we'll pick up this part and we'll place it right here, with the belt going through just like so. Next we'll put the cover in place and we'll put the plastic nut back in place just like that. I just realized that I should not have installed this bolt before, so I'm going to take it out, because this same bolt is going to hold the belt tensioner in place. So make sure the belt is properly installed, and then install the two bolts, one from each side of the tensioner mechanism, and tighten both bolts. Here we have it guys! 
Next step will be to install the belt just like that in the extruder carry. And once both parts are in place, we'll tension the belt just like that. The X axis of the printer is, as you can see, mostly complete. One of the last steps will be to install the plastic cover of the X axis in place just like that, using the two small bolts and turning them in place. Once done, here we have our X axis completely built. So the next step will be no other than inserting everything in place. Be careful with the lead screw, since it has to go through the nut. But once it's in, you can bring it down pretty easily by rotating the Z-axis coupling. I'm going to take this opportunity now to tension the belts for both the X and Y axis. Next we'll pick up these four bolts, since we are going to install the profile with the handle on top of the Z-axis of the printer. Once all four bolts are in, we'll tighten them just like that. Next step will be to install this nice looking screen with the ST2.9 by 9.5mm screws and this piece of metal. So we'll attach it in place just like so, and once we have this assembly, we'll attach it to the frame using this M5 by 8mm bolts. The assembly is going to be installed here on the front of this 40 by 40mm profile on the front of the machine. So we'll tighten the two bolts and we'll be ready to go guys. Next we're going to connect all the cables, starting with the one of the screen. Next we'll pick up these two bolts and these slot nuts because we're going to install the filament spool holder in place, here on top of the printer. We'll slide them in place just like that and we'll just tighten the bolts, here we go. Last step will be to install the plastic part on top and here we have it. As you can see the printer is mostly assembled and it's very robust, so the next thing we're going to do is to insert the PTFE bulbing tube inside the pneumatic lock and start connecting all the cables of the printer. We'll start with the X-axis motor and X-axis end stop. Then we'll connect the extruder motor as well as the filament detection sensor right on top of it. Next step, the Z-axis end stop together with the Z-axis stepper motor. And last but not least, we'll connect the power cable. Now I'm going to remove the clips of the bed, so I'll be able to remove the protective film on top of the printing surface. Here we go! Alright guys, so after quite some steps, we have finished the assembly of this Star 1 3D printer provided by Aerion. If you want to buy these amazing devices, you will enjoy a 12% discount in the checkout using the code ARCHITECTS3DP through the links that you will find down in the description of the video. Now we're gonna set everything up and finally test both the 3D printer and the filament dryer box to check out how they actually work. Now yes, we can turn on the 3D printer and here we have the main menu. We'll go to Control, Auto Home and we'll bring the extruder to the home position. Next, I'm going to turn the printer off and manually level the bed using the four wheels underneath as we always do. Once we have it, we'll insert the microSD card here on the front and using the control panel, we'll go to print and we can see the files included in the memory card. But before printing anything, we'll need to load filament, and for that we'll go to Ctrl, Auto Home, and then Ctrl, Automatic Load. A cool graphic will appear on the screen as you can see. While the nozzle is heating up, I'm going to prepare the filament that goes right here. But in this case we're not going to use this red PLA, since if you remember, we set some white PLA in the dryer box at the beginning of the video, and we have right here. As you can see, now the temperature is 49.6 degrees and the humidity is 30%. If you remember at the beginning of the video, when I started the dryer box, approximately one hour ago, the temperature, as you can see, was 29.6 degrees and the humidity inside the box was 47%. Now, after one hour, as you can see, the temperature has increased 20 degrees Celsius and we have reduced the humidity from 47% to just 30%, which is incredible in just one hour. Imagine where can we get if we let the machine running for three or four hours. This nail will definitely increase the print quality in our prints. All right, so back to the printer, we'll pick up the filament coming out of the snail and insert it in place just like so. Once the printer reached 200 degrees, it started extruding filament. And as you can see, after some blue that was used for factory testing, here we have our white filament, guys. I've started one of the test files including the microSD card to see how this printer actually works together with the snail, both provided by Aerion. While this test print is going on, I'm gonna let you as always with a couple cool shots of the Star 1 3D printer and the snail dryer box from Aerion. Before the cool shots, I want to introduce this part of the video sponsor, KissFan. 
Kisfan is an online store that allows you to buy software licenses at cheaper prices than official websites and completely legally. This avoids the need to resort to any type of activator that could compromise the security of your system. Kisfan offers the best deals for legal, safe and cheap purchases. Enter the Kisfan Mega Sale through the link that you will find down in the description. And especially now, enjoy a 50% discount by using the code JD50 in the checkout. Refunds and 24-7 online customer support are supported by Kisfan. If the key is not valid, the money can be refunded. Now yes, back to the cool shots. Don't the Star Wars 3D printer and the snail 3D printer drive box look amazing, guys? I think they look pretty cool. As a quick recap about the printer, it's using a 32 bits motherboard together with the TMC2209 stepper motor drivers that are extremely silent. It has a printing size of 250 by 220 by 250 mm and a power failure resume feature that saved me more than one time. Alright, guys, so after an hour or so, this is what came out of the printer. As you can see, it looks like it has lost some steps right here, but I'm sure it happened because I moved the 3D printer using the handle while it was printing. As you can see, the quality overall is pretty good, especially with white PLA, but I don't know why, it's usually pretty hard to work with in my experience. The snail, this 3D printer dryer box provided by Urion, definitely has made its work with this white PLA filament. I have tested another file that was included in the SD card named Toolbox or something like that and I have right here. As you can see the quality of the walls is just incredible and the supports come out pretty easily, as you can see. It lost the step right here at the bottom because I moved the printer one more time, but from where I didn't move it, the quality of the print is just amazing. The dryer box is definitely a must, especially right now in summer here in Spain. Ok guys, so we have reached the end of this Arion Stab 1 3 printer as well as the snail 3D printer filament dryer box. Please make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, hit the like button and also consider supporting my work on Patreon as all these amazing people does. Alright guys, so as always, see you in the next video.